I want to give a practical example, one practical example of the reason why Christians, you and I, we should involve ourselves in apologetics. One practical example. Can somebody read Obadiah 1 1 from here? Obadiah chapter 1, verse 1. Um, yeah? Yes, Obadiah 1 1. The Lord God, concerning Abel, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the ancient. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Thank you very much, sir. I will let you go, but not now. Did you hear the, I hope you had the verse you just read. I hope you had the verse. Please read it again. I want you to pay attention. The vision, the vision of Obadiah. Mm. Thus say the Lord God concerning Hedo. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. Yeah. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Mm. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Good. Now, do you have a problem with that verse? Does anybody have a problem with that verse? Nobody. Okay, the verse is okay, right? If you have a problem with that verse, can you indicate and then tell us what the problem you have with that verse? The vision of Obadiah. Mm. Don't say that the Lord God mm. concerning Edo. Yeah. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. Please wait. That place again, can you repeat it? We have heard a rumor from the Lord. Again? We have heard a rumor from the Lord. Again? We have heard a rumor from the Lord. All right, thank you, sir. Now, does anybody have a problem with that verse now? You can, you can just have your seat. Thank you very much. Now, do you have a problem with that verse now? You have a problem with it? Ah, ah, I want my daddy to say it. Sir, so, what's the problem you have with the verse? The rumor come from God. Where is the rumor coming from? Is it from heaven or from hell? Thank you very much, sir. Okay, who is going to help us again? Who is sharing an opinion? What problem do you have with that verse? Apart from what daddy said. And if you want to say the same thing, no problem. I just want In to addition. Say. In addition, okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Good. Who is going to help us? Nobody from the congregation, apart from my brother. Okay, you know what I'm going to do now? Because people in the congregation don't want to talk. I will not ask you to explain. Because if God is telling the rumor, can we still say the Bible is the word of God? No, be sincere. We believe, can God tell rumor? No, we can't. So if God cannot tell rumor, and you are seeing this thing from the Bible, can you say the Bible is still the word of God? Okay, are you answering, or you want to tell us the problem you have with the verse? The problem, I think. Okay, good. Because it's the problem we have. We look for solution different. You, it's like you, like telling us, um, it's actually a rumor from God. Okay. Uh, but another version of the Bible tells us that it's a message, and a message is always a fact from God, ah. not a rumor. Okay. All right. Um, it, it's like he's trying to look for a solution. He said his own translation of the Bible say is a message and not a rumor. Okay, so maybe what we're going to do is that the one that I have here and the one that my brother is reading here will throw that one away, right? Maybe, maybe those guys made a mistake. Maybe they made a mistake, right? No, it can't be the same thing now. Bring more message. Yeah, I can understand what they're saying. A message from God. I, like, I think I like that translation that says message. But what do we do about these ones that say rumor? Now we want to go to the solution. This one that is saying rumor, what can we say about it? Because now everybody agreed that God cannot tell more. Good. So what do we do about this one? Remember, we are not going into, into uh, crucifixion. We are just seeing the practical example why we need apologetics now. The reason why we need to engage ourselves in apologetics. That's what we are seeing right now. Because this question I'm asking you is the same question that by the time you go out there, you want to go and minister, somebody will ask you that question. I say, come and see your Bible. You say God tells you more. So how will you explain it to the person? That, that just happened recently. Oh, it happened recently? Something happened recently. Okay. Just, just two weeks ago. Okay. Something happened recently. Just two weeks ago. A pastor collected more than 1,000 Bibles and got them both. He said, why? He said, it's very, very, very contradictory. He said, the Bible is very contradictory. Different passion, different messages, different this, different concepts. Very contact. Get everything together and bond them and you did it. Thank you very much. Okay, without wasting much of our time, which one do we choose? 
Do we take this Bible or do we take this one? Can I have a copy of the Bible? Ah, that one says message. What's this one saying? Message. This one is also saying message. Okay, you know what? I think the solution is that the one that is saying rumor will throw that one away. Maybe by the time you want to go and minister to people, you don't carry the one that says rumor with you. Chili? Uh -huh. You take one with message. I hope it's okay that way. It's not okay. Hey, what's the solution now? Do you have a solution? You still want to ask the problem? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think the thing is, um, um, we have a right? Okay. So, maybe our daddy will still need to re read that particular verse again. Sure no, we want, to, we want to know those words that follow. Okay. You understand? So, probably we could pack it up with that rumor or message. Okay. Because after, now this one says we have a message from the Lord. An envoy was sent to the nations to say, rise and let us go against our property, which is a fact. It's like a message from God, a direct one from God. So maybe if we should reread and we we'll digest, okay. we would understand if it's a room. For the last time, I'm going to allow my daddy to read again. Maybe we, we'll, after seeing the word rumor, maybe we can make a sense out of it. I hope we're not giving you too much work to do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Over there, I want to get. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edo, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the eighteen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against our in battle. Thank you, sir. So, do we get a, do we get any feel of uh, difference there? Eh? It is still the same thing. Hi, rumor inside the Bible. <laughs> Swear. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, now, imagine you go out to minister. Just imagine. You want to go and tell somebody about Jesus Christ. You want to go and tell the person that ah, Jesus Christ can save you, Jesus Christ can deliver, Jesus Christ can do, can do that. And then that's okay, no problem, hold on. Because all those things you're going to be showing me are from the Bible, right? Now, I want to show you something from the Bible because I do believe the Bible is the word of God. So I want to show you that thing from the Bible. And then he now brought out about that one one. And you read rumor. Even you that you are reading it, you might not even notice because immediately my brother, my, uh, my brother already here. We, we, nobody noticed any problem. Then, oh, okay, you noticed. Okay, good. Now, I have to ask him to read it again. And then he now pointed out rumor. How will you explain to the person? He might even be embarrassing to you. And then if you now try to say, okay, let's look at another version. And this one is saying message, this one is saying rumor. And the person will now begin to ask you, eh. So your own word of God, then, eh? you have many versions of your word of God. And you can choose any one you want to choose. He will not say, okay, no problem. Me, I will choose this one that says rumor. You choose the one that says message. And there will be confusion. At the end of the day, the purpose of your ministration will be thwarted. It will become mission impossible, mission aborted. At the end of the day, you are not able to minister. But if we allow that we engage ourselves in apologetics, if we practice the art of apologetics, all these things that seems to be stumbling blocks, that seems to be a problem to us, they will vanish in no time. Now, somebody provides a solution, very, very um, interesting solution. It's just that we couldn't live up to the solution. It couldn't go um, beyond that point. It said that the, it said that another translation said message. Why this one is saying rumor? And it's right. Actually, the word rumor in itself, if you check the dictionary meaning, the word rumor in itself does not mean a false information. You know, sometimes we use word over time and they will begin to give them meaning that I'm not part of it. If you check the dictionary meaning of the word rumor, it means an information. That's what it means. It means an information. Now, a rumor can be, now, a rumor can be positive and it can be negative, meaning that if a rumor is an information, it could be true and it could be false. Now, how can we prove this apart from the dictionary? Now, if I'm able to show the person I'm talking to that, well, rumor actually means an information. It does not mean a false information. But because the way we use it today, ah, all the rumor there, somebody is carrying rumor, we always start it to mean a false information. But that's not what it means. You can look that up in the dictionary. But how can we also prove it from the Bible? So that when I'm going out for evangelism, I won't look at the one that says, okay, I'm going out today. Say this one has rumor or not. 
I mean, this one has message. I won't be checking. How can we go with the one that has rumor and still be able to minister? That's what we want to look at now. Now, if you look at that verse itself, the, the Hebrew word, where the word rumor was translated from, can be translated into four or five words. Rumor, message, brutes. It can even be translated as tidings. I wish we have other versions that they don't, does not mention rumor, message, so you'll be able to see the other translation and the other words that were used. So that's why you see that if you have, in the King James version, it's actually the word rumor. If you check the New King James, it's the message. If you check other translation, you see message. If you check another translation, if you say tidings, you understand? So that word, that singular word, can be translated into, that Hebrew word, can be translated into um, four or five English words. And those words mean the same thing. So if you have an understanding that the word rumor does not mean a false information, but an information, then you won't have a problem with that verse. That's number one. Then number two, Having an understanding that that word can be translated into message, into book tidings, into uh, information and all of that. You can also see as many to the person that well, and, and if you feel that he's talking about wrong information, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about message. Then lastly, lastly, this one is really very important and this one is very powerful because one of the principles of interpreting the Bible is that the Bible interprets the Bible. You can use the Bible to interpret the Bible. So what we are going to do now is that we're going to check another verse of the Bible that uses the word rumor. And then see how the word was used. Is the word used as an information, a message, or is it used as a false information? Now, remember that in our minds, what we believe as rumor, we have been programmed that what rumor means is false information, right? But now we're learning that that's not what it means. Please, don't take my word for it. When you're less busy, go up, go look up the word rumor in the dictionary. Yes, any dictionary at all, just look it up. It doesn't just have one meaning, just look it up. You see what I'm talking about. Now, we're not going to take a look at this word from the Bible and see if that word rumor means what somebody else is saying, that it means false information. We're going to be reading Luke chapter 7, verse 17. Who's going to read that for us? Luke chapter 7, verse 17. Yeah, Luke 7, 17. Oh, 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 I wanted to say this loud. Can I go there without this disruption on the mic? I don't mind going there. Okay, good. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted everybody to hear that. Okay? We can't hear you. All right. And this rumor of him went forth. Throughout all Judah and throughout all the region round about. Good. Um, that's 17, right? If you read verse 16, 15, 16, let's read 15, 16, because that is actually talking about Jesus. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and is delivered into his mother. And there came a fear on us, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. And this woman of him went forth throughout all Judah and throughout all the region around about. Thank you very much. Now that verse is talking about Jesus. It's talking about um, what happened, transpired after somebody was raised to the dead, from the dead and all of that. It says that the rumor about Jesus spread round. Now, let's take this for example. Let's assume that the word rumor means false information. You understand? Let's assume that it means false information. Now, by the time you read that verse, with that meaning in your head, that rumor means false information, does it make sense in that verse? That the false information about Jesus Christ spread abroad Judea and some other places? Is that what it's saying? No. But if that word rumor means message, which is actually what it means, even in the Badaya 1 1, if it means message, then we can say that yes, the message about Jesus Christ or the information about Jesus Christ spread all around in Judea, in Samaria. Is that making sense now? Does any other person have another version? Apart from, uh, I, I guess that is King James. Yes. Yeah, another version? Okay. Good news, okay. This is RSV, right? Okay, let's read from RSV. Uh, no, 17. 
and this report concerning him spread through the whole of Syria and all the surrounding countries. Exactly. That's one of the words I missed when I was trying to um, give it the, the word that was translated from the Hebrew word. Report, yes. I mean, I believe that one is not report, right? Is it report? What is it? This, this what? This news. Good. That was this news. So that's what it, what it, what it means. Now, if you now go back to Obadiah 11 and you try to take these words, report, news, message, you discover that it fits perfectly into the text. And we heard the message from the Lord. And we had the report from the Lord. And we had the news from the Lord. And we had the rumor from the Lord. Can you see it fits perfectly now? Now, by the time somebody say no, no, please, if you have an objection, if you have an objection, please raise up your hands and then let's talk about the objection. We're going to talk, we're going to talk about it, yeah. So by the time you put in these words as a replacement, Please don't shy away from the word rumor because if you try to run away from the word rumor, they will tell you, you see, you're embarrassed. Your, 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 your Bible is saying God has, has told the rumor, which actually is not. So, my brother, what was the objection you have, sir? Yes. So, um, from my own dictionary, yes. Rumor means an information or story that is passed from one person okay. to a person, but has okay. not been proven to be true. Okay, good. Now, I think the problem is, is um, the problem we're having is with the different versions of Bible rumor. Okay. I understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. That rumor means this and that. Yeah. You know, some words could have different meanings. Okay. But it depends on how we use those words. Yeah. Now, saying a rumor is from the Lord and mm. saying a rumor is from other people like us is different. Okay. We could pass on rumor from one person to another. Of course. But saying something like rumor is from the Lord. Yes. It's it's um uh, it um I don't know how to put it. It's it sounds so now. Embarrassing. It's, it's, it sounds embarrassing. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So, that's what we're treating. I think yeah. that person has not perfectly put in the right meaning of that rumor. Mm. Yeah. So okay. it shouldn't be rumor. It could be either the message to report or news. Now, if you are saying that, you happen to be having a problem with those who you are ministering with. Because what that means is that there is a problem with that translation that you are holding. So does that mean a message could be from God and... Um, okay, let's say, does that mean the Lord can send a message that will be passed from one person to another without confirmation? No, that's not what they're saying. That's what it's saying. Yeah. Now, the rumor that you're just giving us as a definition, it means that an information or a message or a report that is going from one person to the other. Now, and that, it says, and that be proven. Yes, what it means is that we don't know if it is true or not. And that be from the Lord. Hold on. We don't know if this word is true or not. That's what it means, actually. It's an information you get. Now, how can we prove it is true or not? We have to look at the source. It is the source that will tell us if this information is true or not. That is why when people go about spreading information, and that's the reason why our understanding of the, of the world rumor has been bastardized. Because every time we hear something, even though we don't know if it is true or false, we use the word rumor. Then later somebody will tell you, ah, Kokinji rumor will turn you. Do you understand? Because they believe that rumor always has to be false. But what it means is that when now, if I'm saying something to you, and you don't see me as a reliable source, you don't trust me, then you're not going to take what I'm saying as the truth. But if that information is coming from a real life, that's why I'm telling you that that word, that the word rumor, is based on where it is coming from. If a message is coming from the Lord, can the light come from the Lord? No, it's a truth that will come from the Lord. And actually, if you look at the verse again, it is just the word report, news, information, rumor. You understand? Now, you don't have a problem with those other words, message, news, do you believe that it can be false news? So why don't you have a problem with that? No, re reply, reply. Let's, let's be interactive. Let's be interactive. The problem I'm having is this. Mm. You know, when you are trying to go for a project from your, um, from your explanation, yes. now I'm preaching to an unbeliever for the first time. Mm. And I, I'm sounding the word rumor to that person's ear. Yeah. You know, it sounds awkward. Something like, you know, some people might not have the patience of allowing you to go for that, okay. to buttress your point, mm. or by checking other version, other chapters in the Bible. Yeah. But like when you say rumor, the person will mm. not even want to give for that. Are you the one saying rumor to the person? You don't understand. I thought I'm just asking you that, see you, see rumor in your Bible. If it's asking you, then you want to listen. Now what if you are talking to a learned person, that you okay. that particular version, that yeah. particular verse, mm. and the rumor came from the Lord. Yes. And the person would like, your Lord, 
And yeah, that's why you need to rest. That's why we're doing what we're doing. And some people might not have the patience to hold on. Yeah, if they don't have the patience, there's nothing you can do. That means they're not ready to listen to you. Yeah, even in your normal patients, if you go to some people, they don't want to listen to you. They will tell you, I beg, we don't have time for you. But for those ones that are ready to listen to what you have to say, you have that responsibility to explain to them. Jesus Christ said that when you go out or you go to a place, if you are accepted in that place, stay there, and then you preach the message. But if you are rejected, what do you do? You go to another place. You understand? So don't bother yourself with those people that don't want to listen to you. But we are bringing this up because, and mind you, this is not one of the, this is not the only thing you're going to be hearing when you go out to minister. You are going to hear a whole lot of things. This is just one of them. We are bringing this up so that when you encounter something like this, you can explain to the person. At least for you yourself, have that understanding personally. Because if you don't have that understanding, it's enough to say this Christianity is nonsense. How can God be telling us rumor? That, that one in love is just to can even push you out of Christianity and say, this is nonsense. God, tell you rumor. Ah, I don't do it again, no. I beg, let me go and for another religion. You understand? So first off, you need to understand it for yourself. After you understand it, then you don't try try and explain to somebody else. Now explanation is not always an easy thing to do. Some people, by the time you explain to them and they see and understand what you are saying, because they don't want to accept your explanation, they will still reject it again. But no problem, you have done your part, which is what the Bible says. Explain to them with meekness and fear. Don't get frustrated, don't get angry. Don't let them, don't let them um, uh, make you say what you don't want to say. Just be calm and try to explain to them. So, Praise the Lord. Amen. This small image that is discussing a lot of the uh, subject of discussion. Okay. Rumor. Yes. By my own uh, reading here, Encyclopedia English Plus. Alright, sir. It defines rumor as a pieces of purported true information okay. that circulates without substantiating evidence. Okay. If I just come and I say that tomorrow a bag of rice will be 5,000, probably I have a privilege to be closer to the government that have decided that by tomorrow they are going to subsidize rice and make the price crash down to five thousand dollars. So if I come to a gathering and I say tomorrow a bag of rice is five thousand, today they may see it as too much. The after part could be regarded as a purported true information that circulates around. Thank you very much, sir. And that's the reason why I said that you should try and look up the word rumor for yourself personally from the dictionary. Because sometimes, I told you, we make use of words and then we don't even know what it means. It means the opposite completely. Because we already have rumor to be a false information, false information, false information. But if you look it up from the dictionary, you discover that that is not it. Then you look it up from the Bible itself. I can still show you another verse from the Old Testament where the word rumor is used. And it's not even, it does not have anything to do with false information. It's just talking about the message. So you need to get yourself familiar with these things. You need to get yourself acquainted with it because you will need to do a lot of explanation as a Christian. That's what that verse is saying. First, um, Peter chapter 3 verse 15. You will do a lot of explanation, a lot of clarification. So that those people that want to really desire the truth, that really want to know Christ, that want to talk to him, those stumbling blocks will be taken out of the way. Somebody might want to become a Christian, they might want to you know, uh, be a part of, of Christ. But because of just that place alone, you will say, ah, this one, I can't worship this kind of God. But if he sees you, you're able to explain to him, you give him evidence, ah, this is what he says, so this is what he says, so give that person with the evidence that you've given to him or her. The Holy Spirit will take it up from there. Amen. Amen. So if somebody comes to you and show you over that one one, can you confidently Confidently explain that verse to the person. Are you sure? You are sure? Alright, let's proceed. Thank you very much, sir.